Okay, this video is assuming you already know you want to bridge your own font. And we're going to pick a candidate font here. You can use a stencil font, but we're going to we're going to find one that's not a stencil font. And I found one by looking at 1001 fonts. It's this one here. I want to bridge this one here. So over 1001 fonts has a good display of the character set we, we have to work with. And when I was looking through hundreds of these fonts, the thing I was interested in is what did the three look like? as well as the, um, the lowercase letters, particularly the G and uh, you know these all these characters. This one looks like a good candidate. So we're gonna go ahead and download this and put it in a temp directory. And I'm gonna use FontForge. Uh, FontForge is a font editing program that's been available for about 20 years. And it's quite complete. Um, and it's available on Windows, Linux, and Mac and Mac for as well. You can look at FontForge. You can do a, so a FontForge search on YouTube, but it doesn't. Um, there's not really a video for how to bridge a font, so that's what we're. That's what I'm going to show you today. So I'm first going to run FontForge, and I'm going to open the font that that we just downloaded which was that uh, Topographer Subway. And you can see that this is the uh, overall character set. Uh, and here are, the, here are the letters, the glyphs that we need to actually modify. We need to do the O, the zero, um, the four, the six, the eight, the nine, uh, an uppercase characters, an, an A, a B, a D, uh, O, P, Q, R, and then the lowercase, A, B, A, B, E, G, O. Looks like that P has already been bridged right there. Q, and it looks like that's good. So we're gonna, we'll just show you how to do one of these. So this is the glyph editor here. It's made up of two splines. And the tool we want to use to cut these splines is, we want to use this tool here. This is called the, uh, this, the cut tool which which it's a shortcut is a K. So we come down and we can just, we can decide where we want to cut this. Um, we cut it here and it's, we're going to cut one here and you can see, I'll zoom in here. I think, let me see, there we go. So you, I, it added some additional uh, spline points, but we want to get rid of those. So we'll come back over here to the, uh, to this tool. Let me just make this full screen. And we're going to select this this piece in the middle and we're going to delete it. This piece on the bottom, we're going to delete that as well. So we're, we, we need to join these two points together. So the way you do that is you can select the two points by either uh, putting a rectangle around them or you can select them individually by clicking on one and shift clicking the other one. And then if you do a right click, you can say, make a line. So these two are now connected together. And we'll try to do the same thing on this side. And you'll see that when you right click, you can't make a line for some reason. That's because for some reason, when you deleted this middle line out, it doesn't actually delete the endpoints. And I worked for a while to figure out why that is, but I, I couldn't figure that out. But if you click over here and you drag this point out, you'll see that there's another point underneath it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to, well, that one, I don't know what happened there. Did we get it? Make a line. Okay. Um, if you have problems by when you like right click, and it won't let you make a line. There's some problem with the points. Uh, there's an extra point in there that you have to delete. But it looks like we've got this one successfully bridged. All right, so we know that you can see now that when you come back over to this page, that bridge is now in that, in on, on, the, uh, on the zero. So we'll do the four over here. And the four, we can, we can cut again, just like we did before, but we can decide where we want to put the bridge. Do we want to put it in the center here? Or do we want to bridge these two points and then cut like 
cut make a cut right here so let's try that second cut we'll come back over here to the cut tool and we'll do this and then we'll come in and try to click on that section there but we can't click on that section come on if we try to delete this it's not really letting us delete that individual section it deletes more of it so if this is the case which you can come in and you can put an extra point in the middle here and then when you click on that point you can delete that section out okay and then this is a this changes one of those points but these these little handles won't matter but if we run our we want to connect those two together we come over here and we say make a line again and we'll do this we'll click the both of those and we'll make a line's not there again so we have to come in here and try to figure out why that is okay you see now i ended up dragging a point out so we'll delete that so now we'll try and do the make a line and we can do it again okay so this is now going the other thing to notice over here is when we connected all these together you see this highlighting on the inside this means that the that the um um uh, the spline for this particular glyph is all connected together and it's going to look fine when you close it up. So now we've done the four over here. All right. Now some of the challenges you're going to have is when you do the eight, well, not particularly in this font, but some, some fonts, the eight, you want to decide where to put the, uh, where to put the bridge. You may want to put in two bridges for an eight, but you may also want to just put in one and then just bridge across the center. It's up to how the fonts um, actually uh, designed. Well, let's say that we want to, we have all of our glyphs edited and they all look fine. So we can come down here and say, generate a font. And we can call come down here and call this uh, bridged. Wait, before we do that, let's change something over here. If you come over to element and say font info, we need to change a few things over here because we want the font to show up. It says it's bridged in in uh, Fusion 360. So we'll say this is bridged here. And then we want to say this is, this is bridged. And this is bridged. Okay. You see there's copyright notice here. We're going to preserve the copyright notice. And, we, and if you wanted, we could just add a little bit to this, say, you know, bridged by CH. Okay. And it's going to complain if your fonts are larger than that. I haven't had any problem with, with fonts being, uh, lar font names being larger than 29 characters. But if you did, you could just change this font name up here. You've changed this without changing this is a good idea to change it. So we'll go ahead and make that a new random number. Okay. I don't know much about fonts. I don't know how they're all categorized. I'm just making it so that when we, when we generate this font, we'll be able to find it easily. We'll be able to find it easily when we, oh, when we import it into Fusion 360. So here's, uh, we're, we want to save it as, we can save it as a lot of different types of fonts here. We'll go ahead and save it as a troop type font. And uh, it's, there's an issue with uh, uh, Adobe fonts and ATM uh, and TrueType and the EM size being a power of two. This one you can you can you can go ahead hit, just hit yes here. It's going to work fine. And so of course I didn't see where I saved that. Where did I put that? That's in the temp directory as well. So we'll go back over to the temp directory. And you can see that this is the bridge font. We can open this up. And now remember, we didn't get this all completed, but some of the letters are. Some of the, like you can see that the, the zero has got a bridge in it and a four has got a bridge in it. So we can install this now. This just actually just copies it into the Windows, um, Windows font directory. If, after you install a font, you have to restart Fusion. And Fusion only reads in the font table when it, when it starts up. All right, so let's test out this font in Fusion. It's been installed. 
So the first thing we're going to do is create a plate and we'll put text on that plate and we'll say it's a font 04 because we only bridge the two the two characters we'll do it like this For some reason this is huge we'll fix that later we'll make these uh, one point inch 1.5 inches tall and we'll come down here and find that topography subway and you can kind of see that it says bridged here and you'll see that our four our our zero and our four are bridged so we come over here go ahead and get that in the center and then finish that sketch and extrude the plate extrude it down three millimeters that's the wrong way want that to be minus three and then we'll extrude out the letters. We'll cut those out. Make that minus three. We'll turn off the sketch. You can see that it got cut out. But now you see that this O. Oh, come on. This O isn't bridged, but the zero but the zero is. Okay, so we have to finish off this font. We have to finish bridging them out and when you're uh, using your your um, plasma table what you're going to need to do in 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 font forge is uh, figure out what width of this do you want this the your bridging to be because you know you're going to have dross on the back side of your plate and you're going to need to whack that dross off and i use a wire wheel so I came in and I figured out kind of what my what my minimum width is going to be to make this usable. So that's about it. Thanks for watching.